بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد In this lesson we're going to talk about uh, another basic concept that helps us understand all the Arabic language and help compartmentalize a few, a few uh, very important concepts and that is the three types of speech or the three types of words that the Arabic language contains as there are only three types some scholars have added a fourth type which is basically just a combination of two but uh, for for simplicity we'll go with three and that is based on uh, interestingly the uh, th that classification doesn't come a couple hundred years after the Prophet sallam, but rather it was none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib who had said to one of the tabi'in one of his students Abu Aswad al duali that he had pondered the Arabic language and found that all of it falls into three types of uh, speech which is ism or fi'l or harf or noun verb and particle so those are the three that we're just going to take a quick look at and briefly go into the the difference between the two inshallah ta'ala starting with verbs since verbs are usually considered to be the root of all other words in the Arabic language and the word for verb is fi'l right here fi'lun is verb or action it's actually used quite often in the Arabic language fi'lun just means action and the plural of that is af'alun af'alun so fi'lun is singular and af'alun is plural. And verbs in Arabic have, depending on who you ask, you'll find that it has two or three tenses. Two or three tenses, first being the, the past or the perfect tense, which uh, in Arabic is, is called madi tense, madi past tense. And that's also a word that's that's sometimes used in uh, often in uh, in speech and, and er everyday kalam and, and conversation to refer to the past. But in English, it's it's more properly known as perfect tense because it's describing an action that is in the past. It has been perfectly completed. So that's why it's called perfect tense in English. And just an example of that here in Arabic is the verb kataba, kataba, which means he wrote. And then next is the present or imperfect tense, as it's properly known in English, an imperfect being, uh, because it's, it's, it's an action that hasn't been completed, it's still in the process. We're still watching it unfold as we speak. And an example of that in Arabic is yaktubu, which means he is writing. And as for uh, referring to present tense in Arabic, the word used is mudari'a. Mudari so this is this tense is al mudari'a. And then finally, uh, what most scholars would add as most grammarians would add is a third tense is the command or imperative tense what is known in arabic as al amr an amr the command and an example of that is uktub as you notice i'm just taking the same i'm just taking the same verb and showing the three tenses and how its appearance changes slightly from from uh, one conjugation one meaning to the next and one tense to the next so kataba he, he wrote, past tense, yaktubu, he is writing, present tense, uktub, uktub, that's a command. And generally when I um, go through different verb conjugations, I'll probably make some gestures that help uh, internalize things more. And I believe that when studying the Arabic language, and especially in the beginning of your studies, and you repeat some of those verbs you too should make some gestures that that help as, as you say it out loud and also to you know anything that you can do 
and say to help you internalize it more. For example, Ketaba is in the past. So I remember one of my professors, whenever he was he was mentioning anything that was past tense, he would throw his hand back like this as if to, to say that it's it's something that's gone. It's no longer here. It's in it's in the past. It's behind us. So Ketaba, Yaktubu, it's going on right now, and then Uktub. That's the command. Uktub. So that's how that's, that's another way that we can we can practice these things and um, you know and make up senses that way and that's that's something that I strongly encourage anyone that's that's learning Arabic to to do first of all and, and then why is there no future intent tense in Arabic quite simply because um, there's the 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 way to obtain a future tense is simply adding a scene oh that's horrible looking okay at the beginning of the present tense version or that's that's one way another way is adding the word sofa and the difference between scene and sofa is scene generally means that it's going to happen immediately in the future, we expect. Sofa means it'll happen eventually in the future. So, sayaktubu, he will write soon, very soon. He's, he's about to start writing. Sofa yaktubu, you know, he'll, he'll eventually write it, you know. We're not, um, you know, we're not going to time and wait for them, but, uh, you know, it's eventually going to happen. So sofa and scene, they both refer to what's going to happen in the future. For If you see that preceding a present tense verb, but one of them, you know, obviously, and mentioned in the Quran several times, sometimes the Quran will say, you know, they will, they will know, like very soon. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to convey to us that that uh, maybe, for example, maybe the, the day of judgment, they see it as being, you know, far away. But, uh, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a scene at the beginning, like sayya'lamun, uh, then, you know, this is something that, that really they should, they should recognize that their judgment is coming very, very soon. But other times, in the same context, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would say Fasofa Yalamun. They eventually they will come to know. Eventually. And you know, maybe to give them uh, respite and, and to recognize that there's time for them to repent in this life. But that's um what uh, uh, describes basically just a very, very basic overview of the verbs of the of the three different types of speech of course we're going to go over tons and tons of verb conjugations in the future inshallah to Allah but uh, that is just a very basic and brief preview next comes nouns or what is known in Arabic as asma the the singular form is ismun ismun but the plural form is asma'un asma'un and those are nouns and these are just a few examples of nouns from the Quran that I just picked out at random, no rhyme or reason. And unlike English, nouns encompass people, places, things, and a lot more things. Obviously, pronouns and verbal nouns are nouns in English as well, but also adjectives are not always considered to be nouns when, when you're studying the English language, but everything that's not a verb or a particle is considered a noun in the Arabic language. So these are just a few examples. And there are, if you're not familiar with um, with too many different particles or you're not uh, familiar with um, verb conjugations, there are some ways to spot noun when going through the Quran or looking at um, Arabic text. So the ways here are a tanween. If you ever see a tanween on any word, then it's definitely a noun. Same thing as the al ta'rif, or the definitive article. And uh, we'll take a closer look at that pretty soon, inshallah. And then also the closed ta, ta al-marbuta. 
that uh, that closed ta, not the open ta that looks like this, but the but the closed ta right here. This one, whenever you see that at the end of the word, then it is definitely a noun. And then there are other um, there are other ways to distinguish nouns, but uh, since we haven't taken herof jar yet, uh, that's not going to be of too much benefit. Also, nouns fall specific ozan, unlike unlike verbs, different conjugations, and a lot of nouns coincidentally begin with the, uh, or not a lot of nouns, but most words that begin with the letter meme are nouns. Finally, huruf, the third type of word in the Arabic language is the harf, and the plural, the plural of that is huruf. One thing that's interesting is that the, the word harf actually, it means edge or cliff in Arabic. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ And um, that's, that means, you know, is, and from among mankind are people that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if that they're on the edge. They're on the edge. And so harf, interestingly, it can mean, it can have two completely different meanings although somewhat similar in uh, Arabic language studies. One, harf can be, can mean a letter, can mean a letter like um, harf alif, harf ba, harf ta, you know, all there are, there are all the different letters, the 28 different letters, or depending on who's counting, 27 or 29, all those different letters are considered harf or ahruf, and any single one of them can ref be referred to as a harf. But another meaning for the word harf in Arabic studies is the particle. And that's what we're taking right here, the particle. And um, just uh, an example of some of them, which are could be one letter or could be more than one letter, as you see here, are conjunctions. These are probably the most common uh, harf and most common examples of particles in the Quran, the conjunctions. And the difference between these four conjunctions, wa, fa, thumma, and o, oh, first of all, wa means and. It has the exact same meaning as the English and. And it, not only that, but it's, it's used in a lot of the same ways that that and is used in English. It can, you know, be used as a conjunction, bringing two things together, but also, um, like for example, um, you know, I, I met Khalid and Zaid, you know, for example, that's, you know, perfectly fine. And it can also be used to, um, uh, provide order, Tartib in Arabic, just as just as in English, like Khalid finished and then Muhammad, you know, after him or something. But um, but usually in Arabic, these two, thumma and fa, are more often used to definitively provide order and chrono and some chronological benefit to the meaning. So whenever you see a conjunction of fa or thumma, then the then the author the the, the speaker wants to con, the writer wants to convey to you that uh, there's a specific order going on here, and that's not always used in in with wow, uh, usually it isn't, but fa and thumma just about all the time. The difference between those two is that fa. Kind of like seen and sofa, fa means immediately after, and thumma means eventually after. And here's just an example from the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ 
So how can you disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you were dead and you were deceased? So how can you disbelieve in your situation was that you were deceased and you weren't living? فَأَحْيَاكُمْ so it's as if he's, so it's as if they're conveying as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is conveying that he immediately brought you to life. Fa'ahyakum. Since the fa is used. Thumma yumitukum. You know, after this after this long life that you live on earth, or what seems to be a long time to you, then he'll bring death to you. Thumma yumitukum. Thumma yuhyikum again. Then he will be reviving you and bringing you back to life. The first fa'ahyakum here is he brought you to life, and then this one is he is bringing you to life. So that's that's past tense, that's present tense. You'll understand that more later on. But um, the the main point that I wanted to get here is the the wow and the fa and the thumma. Here, all three of these are used in the same sentence, and ironically, they appear in uh, the same order that I put here. Thumma ilayhi turjaun, and then after bringing you back to life again, you will be brought, you will be returned to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that's kind of um, that's that's an example, and there are tons and tons of examples throughout the Quran of of all these conjunctions. Finally, another very, very common conjunction in the Quran is O, which means or, or. And this is just um, a sample from an ayah referring to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can uh, extract knowledge and, and anything from anywhere, no matter where it be, or in the heavens or in the earth as uh, this ayat says you know or in the heavens or in the earth finally um particles that i wanted to teach in the very beginning would because it's probably one of the most if not the most commonly used and known particles in the arabic language is what is known as the definitive article or the that provides the uh, benefit of making kalam and speech and nouns definite and specific is the al for ta'rif and that's just basically just tacking on these two letters alif lam at the very beginning of a noun to make it uh, specific and definitive and an example of that is we take the very well-known noun of kitabun Kitabun, which is book, a book. But then once we add al ta'rif for it, and ta'rif just means making it ma'ruf. Ma'ruf is known. So once we do that, the the change that there's a change that happens here. The tanween at the end is all of a sudden lost. Same thing that if we had whether it's Dhammatan or Fathatan or Kesratan, the Tanween there is lost once we add Al Ta'rif. And the meaning is no longer a book, but it's the book, whichever book it is that we're talking about. Now, of course, if it's the Quran, then if we're talking about the, the word book in the Quran, then usually it will be referring to the Quran. And one thing about the Arabic grammar is that referring to definite and indefinite specific non-specific the words that are often used are ma'rifa and nakira ma'rifa and nakira and they have the same roots of the the common phrase al-amru bil ma'ruf wa nahyu anil munkar al-amru bil ma'ruf wa nahyu anil munkar al-ma'ruf wal munkar so Ma'ruf is something that's known, and munkar is something that's not known. So think about that when you when you see like a word like nekira, because it's not a word that's you know very commonly used outside of this context of, of grammatic studies. So you might forget what it means. 
But if you remember munkar, and that munkar and ma'ruf, ma'ruf is something that's known, something that's good, something that should be present. Whereas munkar is something that, that should not be present and should not be known. It should stay unknown, unheard of. So that's, uh, with, with nekira, we're talking about something that's not known specifically. We don't know the specific instance of it. We're just talking about a book. It doesn't really matter us to which book. We don't know which book it is. We don't need to know which. Uh, as for Al-Kitab, then we know that it is ma'roof to us. It is known to us. And so that is a form of, uh, you know, it has the uh, characteristic of, of ma'rifa. And just a comparison here. Just to further emphasize what I just uh, explained, for example, with this with this chart here, ذلك الكتاب ولا ريب فيه. This is the book wherein no doubts lie, or wherein there is no doubt. And then, when you remove the al tarif of the uh, of the word al kitabu, then all of a sudden it becomes like this example over here. In the word of Allah, or the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ كِتَابٌ So without al-tarif, it will have, it will, the, the dhammatan will be preserved, but with it, you lose that. Same thing with these other examples, right here, right here, al-kitaba, and then kitaban. Fi kitabin, and then fi kitabi but um, otherwise, uh, 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 apart from that, and how it is written in script, it also has the meaning of being definite. So oftentimes when it's translated, it will if it has the al tarif, then it will have the. Whereas if it's without that, then it will have a just referring to being a non-specific example. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say when in introducing the, the first three types of speech, nouns, uh, verbs, and particles, and also introducing especially a, the a couple of the two very, very most common particles that are in the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in Arabic speech in general. Conjunctions, for example, of like wa, fa, thumma, and o, and also al tarif And that's pretty much it. Subhanakallahum bihamdika shiru wa la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.